Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so this passage here is a famous passage about uh, you know uh, church discipline and people being uh, cast out of the church for, for things. Obviously, mainly dealing with fornication here in First Corinthians. But that's not what I'm going to preach on tonight. I actually want to preach on a sermon. It's titled "Do Not Covet." Do not covet. And what I want to focus on in this passage is looking down at verse 9, <clears throat> picking up in verse 9, it says, I wrote unto you that it, wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, know not to eat. <clears throat> so, this passage right here makes it clear about fornication. But you know what it also makes it very clear about is people that are covetous. And Amen. people that are covetous are also in this category of uh, you know, in danger of being thrown out of the church. Amen. And people don't really realize that. People will, will often focus on the fornicators or maybe somebody that's preaching heresy or teaching heresy in the church. But th the list goes on. Idolaters, railers, drunkards, extortioners. You know, but covetous is on this list. And it says, uh, verse 13, But them that are without God judges, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. And so the Bible's making it real clear that people in this category, these categories are wicked people. You know, they're wicked people. If you're covetous, it's a very serious sin. I mean, it's listed in the Ten Commandments. It's a very serious sin. Uh, turn with me, just turn with me to Exodus chapter 20. We'll look at that. But uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to read a passage in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. It says, this is Jesus speaking, and he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abund abundance of the things which he possesseth. So Jesus is warning, you know, to beware of covetousness. And you know, I, if anybody doesn't know what covetousness is, or to covet, it's just desiring something that's not yours. You know, lusting after something that's not yours, and, and wanting that thing for yourself. That's covetousness. So, turn, I had you turn to Exodus chapter 20. Look down in verse number 17. It says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So this makes it very clear that it's coveting something is something that's not yours. His house, his wife, manservant, maidservant, ox, car, you know, uh, anything, to bring it into modern day terms, you know, somebody's car, somebody's watch, somebody's clothing, you know, let's, let's go on the women's perspective here, you know, that's, that's the thing, is being covetous takes all different forms, and we ought to beware lest we be covetous, you know, that's for sure, and so we're going to learn tonight what we can do to keep from doing that, while you're, while you're in your Bible, turn to Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. And, you know, it's very it's a wicked thing to be covetous. I'm going to read Proverbs 28, 16. It says, The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. So if we hate being covetous and, and coveting things, then we're going to prolong our days. You know, there's also a passage that says if you're, you know, obedient to your parents, you shall live long upon the earth, right? Well, here's another one where you're going to prolong your days if you're not covetous. So I had you turn to Joshua chapter 7. We're going to see the opposite. We're going to see a very extreme case of covetous, uh, covetousness here. It says in verse 19, look down at verse 19, verse, chapter 7. It says, And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Verse number 21, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, 
and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So here we see that Achan, he seen something, he coveted it, he took it. It wasn't supposed to be his. God said that they weren't supposed to take anything from that battle. But he took it, and then he, he hid it among his stuff. I mean, man, if you're going to cut, you're coveting something, then you're going to take it, and you're just going to bury it. You're just going to hide it. It's like, oh, it's mine. I mean, look at the wickedness here of Achan and, and what he's doing. But let's, let's keep reading. And it says in verse 23, And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord, and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. You know, Achan, he got a very extreme case of punishment with covetousness, right? Achan, he was cut, he coveted those things he seen, and you know what? It, it resulted in him being stoned to death. But not only him, all that he had was taken. His family was stoned. And then after that, they burn it with fire. I mean, that is very... Very, this shows us how serious God is about covetousness. Now, obviously, Achan did something above and beyond. He was covetous in the beginning. That's where it started, was with covetousness. But he definitely wasn't supposed to take of those things because God commanded him not to take. So, he was covetous. He was killed for it. He didn't get him anywhere good. You know, nowhere did he get anywhere, you know, did he get ahead in life because he, uh, he took those things that he coveted. You know, but you know, many people have died because of covetousness. You know, it said in uh, in Exodus that you shouldn't covet your neighbor's wife, right? So many people will will covet and they'll commit adultery, or even if they're not married, some people will covet and they'll do they'll commit fornication. And guess what? It results in murder. People people have uh, crimes of passion, you know, and they kill people over it, or or stealing. People get caught stealing red-handed in the middle of the night or, or whenever, and people will go into a rage and kill them, right? All because they were covetous. And they seen those things and they took them, right? Just as Achan did here. Turn with me to uh, Micah chapter 2. <clears throat> Micah chapter 2. It's right after the book of Jonah. Right at the end of the Old Testament. <clears throat> Micah chapter 2. So we see that covetousness is a very wicked sin. It's something we ought to avoid. It says in Micah chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work... What? Might, oh, <laughs> Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away, so they oppress a man in his house, even a man and his heritage. You know, this, this passage right here, it says they coveted fields and they take them by violence. It kind of reminds me of the story of Ahab and Naboth. If, you, if you're familiar with that story, Ahab, was, he coveted Naboth's vineyard. Right? He was married to Jezebel, you know that wicked uh, woman Jezebel, he was married to her. And he, he, he went to, to Naboth to ask him for the field, to buy it from him. But Naboth said no, you know, he didn't want him to have it, it was his field. But then he coveted after it, and then he complained to his wife. And what did his wife do? She had Naboth killed, right? And took that field and seized upon it, and judgment came down upon Ahab, obviously. But I think about that when I read this in verse 2. They coveted fields and take them by violence. You know, Naboth, or Ahab coveted that field and then took it by violence. But number two, point number two I have for you is not only is uh, covetousness wicked, but it's something that uh, all false prophets do. 
All the false prophets are covetous. So turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. You know, we ought to, we ought to avoid covetousness. It could get you thrown out of the church. I mean, who in the world wants to be thrown out of church? You know, man, I'm at church all the time during the week. <laughs> it's like, what would I do with those hours? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. Nothing good. So I, I don't want to be covetous. I don't want to. It, 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 I mean, that's just. I'm not going to be. So, uh, in Second Peter chapter two, look down at verse number one. It says, "But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies." even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So the context is false prophets. Chapter, or verse number 2, it says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness they shall with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So these, these men are covetous, they're greedy or filthy lucre. They're trying to get your money. They don't care about people. They're false prophets. They're wolves. The Bible says inwardly they're ravening wolves. And they don't, they don't care about you. They just want your money. And we see this so much in, in religion today, in the false religions of this world. Right. These TV evangelists get on TV. Just send us your money now and God's going to bless you. You know, that, can we get a thousand dollars? You know, it's like, man, what in the world? People actually fall for this stuff. And they people are robbed blind, but you know what? They are blind. They're looking uh, <clears throat> to buy their way into heaven, or they don't know the truth of the gospel. You know, it's sad. And then these wicked people take advantage of them, and just because they're covetous, and they make merchandise of them. And then the Bible's real clear, their judgment... Now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These people are, the Bible is real clear, these false prophets, they're, they're twice dead, they're plucked up by the roots. Uh, we'll, we'll probably turn to that later. Uh, look down at verse number 14. Verse number 14. It says, having eyes full of adultery, right? Again, adultery. And that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. So these people, they, they have these eyes full of adultery, they can't cease from sin, because adultery in essence is covetousness. They're 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 wanting their neighbor's wife. That's what it is. And they've exercised it uh, with covetous practices, they cannot cease from sin. They're uh, they're beguiling those unstable souls, the ones that don't know any better. And verse 15 says, Which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. So these people, they love the wages of unrighteousness. And they're full of covetousness. That's what they are, these false prophets. We'll see it again. Turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. I have another verse I was going to read here. <clears throat> uh... Uh, Luke chapter 16 verse 14 it says and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him you know obviously the Pharisees were a bunch of false prophets and they were covetous as well but uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 1 it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So these people, they're, they're lovers of their own selves. They're gratifying themselves. And in turn, they're covetous. They boast. They proud, they're proud. You know, they're disobedient to their parents. So they're, they're losing all of that reward for uh, length of days. Right. Because they're not obeying their parents and they're covetous. So they're losing both of those. And... Uh, <clears throat> They're without natural affection, verse 3. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, 
turn away. So we ought to turn away from these people that are, that are false prophets, even people that have uh, been kicked out of the church. The Bible is real clear. Put away from yourselves that wicked person. So false prophets are no different. Obviously, we should turn away from them. We're not, we don't want to be near any false prophets except for if we're rebuking them. I mean, that's the only case, probably. So, that that's that's pretty serious. These false prophets are, are definitely covetous. <clears throat> but, number three, my, my third point is, you know, idolatry, or covetousness, is also idolatry. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter number five. Ephesians chapter number five. I'm going to read a verse in Colossians chapter 3. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So right here in Colossians 3, verse 5 and 6, it says covetousness, which is idolatry. So covetousness is idolatry. And... For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So these people, when, when you're being conscious, you're being disobedient, and the wrath of God is going to come upon you. You know, God is not going to bless you when you're being covetous. So I have you turn to Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse, look down at verse number 1. It says, Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us in an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor an unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So, it's very clear with these two passages in uh, <clears throat> Ephesians and Colossians that covetousness is idolatry. And the reason being is because when you're covetous of something, it's, it's not always something that you can have. Or it's not always something that you're gonna you're gonna go and take right away. So you you put that thing up on a shelf, so to speak, and you're always working towards getting it. it there's nothing you're wanting else you want to do but to have that thing. You know, people. A, a common thing I can think of is like a car, right? Somebody wants this fancy sports car. They have a car that will get them from A to B. It's just fine. It works perfect. You know, it'll get them wherever they need to go, but they got to have this new shiny Corvette, you know. And they got to have it so they can look cool and they can drop the top back, you know. So they're, they, they go and they, they look at it and they covet it and they go home and all they can do is think about this and what they're going to do to get this thing, you know. So covetousness is idolatry because they're putting that thing up there and, and they're not going to stop until they get it. Right? That's a that's an example of something where they can't get it unless they like stole it. Right? They just steal it, go to the car dealership, steal it. That comes with some great consequences. But if they're gonna they can work towards it and they can get it, you know, but that's still being covetous. You know, because do they need it? Do they need that thing? No, they don't need it. So uh, you know, some people will covet and and they'll they'll make things an idol. Very clear. <clears throat> uh, and then on top of that, you know, with today in today's world, you could just put anything on a credit card, right? You can go get a loan, and you can the the the, the bankers they'll give anybody if you have they, they'll give people credit. It's it's crazy the amount of credit they'll give people. It's like I, 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 it's beyond me how they figure out what they're gonna give people. I don't understand it. Because I've never been able to get a lot of credit, but I've never even held a balance on any credit card. <laughs> it's like, man, they, they don't want to give me a, a lot of credit. But uh, I, I know people that have filed bankruptcy and their credit's like through the roof. It's like, man, what in the world am I doing wrong? I don't really care because I don't use credit a whole lot to tell you the truth. I'm just going to pay for it because I, I got it. 
to pay, you know. So the thing is, people can can go out, they can covet something, they can gratify it at that moment. They can just take it, they can put it on credit, they can finance that amount, and then they're just in debt for the rest of their lives. You know, I mean, the debtor is 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 servant to the lender, you know. So, right. I mean, do you want to be somebody's slave the rest of your life? You want to be their servant? I mean, I don't. I, I mean, the only person I want to serve is God, you know, and the guy I work for. If if you work for somebody, you should uh, you should treat your, your your masters well, especially them that are of faith. But uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse seven, <clears throat> it says, "The rich man ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender." That's why it was on my mind. Verse number eight says, "He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail." He that hath the bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. So, Proverbs gives us a good contrast here. You know, the borrower is serving the lender, but a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he that giveth of his bread to the poor, he shall be blessed. So, we can counteract covetousness by uh, being a cheerful giver. We can give to the poor, or give to the cause of Christ. You know, we always think about giving in terms of money, but you can give of your time, your efforts. You know, I can't think of anything than, uh, you know, being less covetous than going out, taking your time to go sweat in 100 degree weather and knock on people's doors that, that yeah. have, most of the time don't even want you there. You know, that's a selfless act to go out and do that. And I know we have a lot of people that go out and knock doors and, uh, <clears throat> You know, that's, that's, that's crazy. But the thing is, is you can go out, you can knock doors, you can give of your time and to counteract covetousness. If you're given to covetousness, then you have to counteract that. Let's look at some solutions you can have. If, you, if you're having problems with covetousness, let's look at some things you can do to help yourself overcome this thing. And so turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to read another verse in Proverbs 21, verse 26. It says, He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. So again, Proverbs uh, uh, contrasts the two. You know, the covet that He coveteth greedily all the, day long, all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, right there, again, giving is something you can do to counteract covetousness because a covetous person is going to just keep all, everything they have themselves. They're going to they're gonna hoard it up and, and save it for themselves. They're greedy. Look down at 1 Timothy chapter number 6. As you turn there in verse number 7, it says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. For have, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. <clears throat> so right here is very clear. When you covet, you're, you, you, you're erring from the faith. And you're piercing yourself through with many sorrows. But look at verse 11. It says, But thou... So but, they say, it's a change in the... In the thought, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So we ought to follow after these things. Flee from covetousness. Flee, uh, <clears throat> flee those things and uh, go after righteousness. How can you go after righteousness? Well, you can go out, you can win souls. You can. Uh, that's gonna. That's gonna help you the best. That's the best way to put your faith to action, and to you know, uh, you know, win crowns in heaven. You know, uh, the, the 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 fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So it's a wise thing to go out and win souls. But it does so much more than that. It, it refreshes your spirit. It makes you realize what uh, what's most important in life. Because you go to the door and you say, you know, more important than even coming to church, you tell these people. It's like, I want to know that I'll see you in heaven. Amen. You know, and so you ask them these questions, it puts things in perspective, 
And for a second, you have to put yourself in their shoes because what you were once there. You know, whether what age, whatever age you were when you got saved, everybody was a different age. But at, at, at some point in your life, you were in their shoes. We're all we were all we're all sinners, and we all come short of the glory of God. And so we've all had to believe the gospel in order to overcome this world. So we can be selfless. We can go out and follow after righteousness, godliness, go to church, listen to the preaching. It's going to help you overcome things. I mean, that's why I'm preaching on covetousness today. Uh, you know, have faith, love, you know, be patient and have meekness. You know, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth. But turn with me, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Have you turned to Ephesians chapter 5? So we're looking at some solutions to being covetous, some ways we can overcome it. We've seen that it's, it's wicked to be covetous. All false prophets are covetous. They all are greedy and filthy lucre. It's a wicked thing. <clears throat> but here's another solution. It says in Ephesians 5, I had you turn, look at verse 17. It says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So, you know, in 1 Timothy, where we read, it said, follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. You know, all these things are, are things that are going to help you to be filled with the Spirit. And another way to help you be filled with the Spirit is obviously not to be drunk with wine. Don't drink at all, you know. Uh, but verse number 19, it says, speak unto yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So we ought to fill our minds with, with godly music and songs and hymns. You know, the, the, the hymn CDs that we have at church are, are a blessing, Amen. you know, because we can, we can listen to these songs played, uh, you know, with the piano and all the instruments. And it's just great to have that because, I mean, think about it, not a lot of people have that kind of a resource. It's awesome to have those CDs. I know my family listens to them all the time. My kids love to listen to them. My daughter listens to them while she goes to sleep. She wakes up singing. You know, I think it's, I think it's awesome. The Bible says that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. You know, I think about that when, when I hear them singing sometimes in the car or whatnot. It's, just, it's interesting. But the Bible tells us that that's how we get filled with the Spirit. It's by singing, making melody in our heart unto the Lord. And so, you know, when you're on the job, you can always have a song in your mind. Or, or rather, you can even have scripture in your mind. You could be uh, learning the, the Bible memory passage. You could be quoting scripture in your mind. But the reason the Bible uses music, says music, because music just, it, it relates in your mind. You can remember it so well. And, you know, anybody that, that's listened to worldly music knows that you can, you can still think of a song and you still remember the words to a song in your mind that you haven't heard in 10 years. It's like, yeah. that's how music just sticks with you. And so, we need to fill our minds with godly things. We need to edify our minds and put psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs into our minds. That way we can be filled with the Spirit and we can overcome covetousness. If you have these songs in your, in your heart and in your mind throughout the day, you see these things that you may have coveted after at one point in your life, but guess what? You're not even thinking about that anymore because you're thinking upon godly things. Your, your, your mind is full of the Spirit. So, let's keep going. It says, uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. This is the last place I'll have you turn. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm going to read a verse in 2 Corinthians 9. Verse number 7, it says, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. You know, God loves people who give, you know, give them your time. We already went over this a little bit. But, uh, you know, go soul winning. You know, love the brethren. Love your brothers in Christ. You know, get to know everybody in the church. You know, you know that's how we're going to overcome these, these sins in the Bible. But look down at 1 Corinthians 14. 
in verse number 49 or 39, it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. So, the, my last point is, you know, here, is if you, if you must covet, covet to prophesy. You know, if, you, if you're going to covet something, covet to be out sowing and preaching out a door. You know, I, I, even today, even today, I, I was kind of guilty of this, because I seen... Uh, David and, and Wallet out, out giving the gospel to this guy. And I was like, man, I wish somebody would listen to us. You know, I was with my son. And I was like, man, I wish somebody would open the door and want me to show. You know, I was like coveting to prophesy. You know, I wanted to give somebody the gospel. I did get to give somebody the gospel. You know, God, he, he heard me right there. You know, I was praying for them that they would get that guy saved. I don't know if they did or not. But, but uh, you know. We ought to covet to prophesy. If that if that's what you if you must covet, that's what you should covet. Covet to prophesy. You know, so in conclusion, you know, number one, it's wicked to covet. It can get you thrown out of church. It's very serious. I mean, <clears throat> if you're a very covetous person, and typically, you know, it's something that can be hidden very easy, being a covetous person. But the Bible says, Surely your sin shall find you out. So you can't all you can't hide your sins forever. And God knows your sin all the time. But number two, you know, all false prophets are covetous. You know, that's that's one reason not to be covetous. Do you want to be like a false prophet? I don't. I don't want to be a false prophet. Number three, uh, it's idolatry. We don't want to have idols. You know, uh, we want to have just the Lord as our, our God. We don't want to make uh, idols and, and worship those things. But uh, number four, we can have some solutions. We can flee from these things by being filled with the Spirit and just being a cheerful giver with our time, with our money, with whatever we have in this life. We, we, can, uh, we can overcome these things. I'll, uh, I'll leave you off with this last verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have where he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So we ought to be content with the things that we have in this life, and don't covet. So let's pray. Dear Lord, just thank you for this time. Just thank you for everyone that showed up tonight. I just, I just bless, I hope you'll bless them for being here. I hope they got something out of the service, Lord, something they can take with them and apply in their lives, Lord. I just pray that you'll give us everyone uh, safe passages home, Lord. Be with the Compton soul winning this weekend. It's going to be a great event, Lord. I know you'll be in that. And just uh, thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.